How did the Appaloosa get its name? What is the Chief Joseph Trail Ride? Where did the Appaloosa come from? The Appaloosa Museum and Heritage Bye. Center provides answers to all these questions and more. The museum was established in Moscow, Idaho in 1974 as an annex of the Appaloosa Horse Club headquarters. It was the first museum established by a white horse breed organization. Here you will find artwork, artifacts, and western tack all carefully displayed to enthrall and inform you about this magnificent horse's history. The museum also tells the story of the Appaloosa Horse Club and its programs and events from its founding in 1938 to the present. There's even an Appaloosa Hall of Fame featuring horses and people who have significantly influenced the Appaloosa breed. Each year, four to 5,000 people visit the museum. Many of them are children. The curator coordinates with teachers to provide entertaining and educational tours for their classes. Can you walk? Yeah, you can. Do you think you can run with those on? Uh-uh. No. <laughs> so they kind of restrain you, don't they? Yeah, they do. Often, tour groups visiting the Northwest include the museum in their itinerary, introducing the breed to many people who would otherwise be unaware of it. These tours are frequently led by longtime Appaloosa promoter George Hatley. Sometimes use a, a saddle like this. Many parents also bring their children to visit during the holiday open house in December, when Santa arrives on an Appaloosa. Even Santa doesn't get as much attention as a spotted horse on this day. The event includes snacks, making Christmas cards, and maybe even a short ride on a special saddle in the museum. Native American artifacts are highlighted in the section exploring the Nez Perce and the Palouse tribe's connection with the Appaloosa. With the acquisition of the horse in the early 1700s, these Indians' lives were greatly improved. They traveled more widely, more frequently, and with greater ease on horseback. Trade expanded and enriched their cultures. Many articles were copied from other tribes, such as this style of war bonnet, common to Plains tribes, and then adopted by the Nez Perce. Beads, trade cloth, and dyed horse hair embellished their horse equipment. This par flesh was tied on a pack horse and carried personal belongings. A woman's saddle had an additional horn from which to hang a cradle board. The horses thrived in this grassy landscape, and soon the Indians had so many horses they'd become the main item of trade. The first white men settling here referred to the spotted horses they found by the Palouse River, or owned by the Palouse tribe, as a Palouse horse. This was later slurred together, giving the name Appaloosa, and it later became Appaloosa. As time went on, migrations of missionaries, cattlemen, homesteaders, and miners began to squeeze out the Native Americans. The Treaty of 1863 took land of several Nez Perce and Palouse bands, and this led indirectly to the Nez Perce War of 1877. Chief Joseph and others tried to lead their people to escape to Canada. This map shows the routes taken by the Nez Perce and the pursuing U.S. armies. The Nez Perce practiced selective horse breeding, and the toughness and endurance of their horses, including Appaloosas, helped them outpace the U.S. soldiers. Their desperate, grueling trek covered 1,350 miles and lasted three and a half months. Revenue from selling prints of this painting depicting a famous war site add to the museum's expansion fund. Many examples of saddles, horse tack, and weaponry associated with the Appaloosa's history are on display. Most of the soldiers pursuing the Nez Perce used a McClellan saddle, a cavalry saber, and an 1873-4570 Springfield carbine. Chief Joseph carried an 1866 Winchester, like the one displayed in this case. Since Appaloosas are colorful, they became widely used in Wild West shows and circuses. Buffalo Bill rode one, and in his later years, he drove a team of Appaloosas. 
You can find Appaloosas at the racetrack, on cattle ranches, in endurance and competitive rides, in 4-H and pony clubs, in show jumping, and combined driving. In other words, there isn't anything an Appaloosa can't do. A video of the Appaloosa Horse and the Appaloosa Horse Club can be viewed at the museum. Other videos are also available. Expansion plans for the museum include improvements for the video viewing area. Sales receipts of the gift shop help cover cost of managing the museum. Here you'll find a wide variety of items featuring Appaloosas, including postcards, stationery, jewelry, coffee cups, bumper stickers, posters, and art. A variety of books are also available, including children's books. Some museum activities take place outside the museum. A small area behind the building provides a pasture for real live Appaloosas in the summer and early fall months. Fundraising for the expansion sometimes includes auctions or drawings for donated Appaloosas. When the museum was originally constructed in 1974, only display space was taken into consideration. No provisions were made for storage space, workspace, library space, a gift shop, or restrooms. The blueprints for expansion address these shortfalls. This is the existing museum space. The yellow areas designate the planned expansion. The museum's development is ongoing and important for the preservation and promotion of the Appaloosa breed. Much of the work for the expansion has already been done. Many Appaloosa owners have made substantial donations through the Wall of Fame and the Appaloosa Spots Program, and structural steel has been donated. The Appaloosa Spots Program consists of a large wooden horse silhouette with bronze, silver, and gold spots, recognizing donors of $500 to over $5,000. Won't you help preserve the colorful heritage of the Appaloosa? Call 1-208-882-5578 extension 279 and find out how today or send your donation to the Appaloosa Museum 5070 Highway 8 West Moscow Idaho 83843